हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज गौरव बंसल एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स एंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इन दिस टॉपिक ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स एंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट वी विल डिस्कस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक सच एज डेट वर्सेज इक्विटी डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स क्योंकि वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज बॉन्ड ऑन बॉन्ड आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस ए वेरी स्पेशल सेशन बिकॉज बॉन्ड इज सो इंपॉर्टेंट and regularly so many question come but apart from them whatever is there i will discuss in this session equity the markets for shares stocks ownerships of the company so i will briefly describe both of these bonds i have already done as i have mentioned here then primary market secondary market money market capital market largely these are our topics nbfc chit fund i have covered through questions in fact in this session we have 20 mcq the maximum number of question for any session actually so many of the previous year question as well as many of the other mcqs are there for practice so let us start without delay so what is debt and what is equity debt basically when party a takes money from party b okay cash is taken by party a from b company a from b in exchange company a promises that i will pay you back this amount okay let us say this amount is x x plus extra in future okay so all your debt instruments look like that that in future i will pay you extra you give me money today in future i will pay you extra it can be on the basis of a promise to pay fix that i will pay you 8% per year it can be on variable that it is our understanding that we will change the interest rate as per the market conditions as per the banking mclr marginal cost of lending rate okay so likewise but the agreement is always like this you give me money today i will give it back to you tomorrow and hence since there is a promise to pay back in future all of the debt instruments are actually promissory note okay on the other hand all promissory note are not debt instruments all the debt instruments are promissory note but all the debt promissory notes are not debt instruments means there are other type of promissory notes as well but all the debt are promissory note like this if you know the venn diagram promissory note is this big subset within that there is debt okay so there are non debt instruments also which are promissory note for example cash currency currency is also promissory note if you read the currency note of india you will find i promise to pay back द होल्डर द इक्विवेलेंट ऑफ दिस अमाउंट ओके मैं धारक को इतने रुपए अदा करने का वचन देता हूं दैट इज ए प्रोमिस बाय द रिजर्व बैंक गवर्नर ठीक है सो दैट इज ऑल्सो ए प्रोमिजरी नोट एनी वेज लेट्स गेट बैक टू द टॉपिक सो डेट वेयर समबडी टेक्स मनी फ्रॉम अदर पर्सन इन एक्सचेंज प्रोमिस टू पे बैक विद एक्स्ट्रा अमाउंट इज बैंक लोन ए डेट इंस्ट्रूमेंट नो because bank loan is not exchangeable you cannot give it to other person you cannot transfer your loan to other person like that for example you have taken a home on a loan and you want to sell that home after 5 years but loan is going on first you have to settle that loan foreclose that loan and then only you can transfer the house loan will not transfer to the other person so bank loans are not transferable whereas all the financial market instruments that we talk about they are transferable if we mention something as financial instrument that means it must be transferable owner of that asset can be anyone at any point of time it is transferable so debt over there they are transferable okay so most common type of debt is bond you buy a bond issued by government basically you have given money to the government but 
you do not have to wait for the maturity date you can sell it after a few days also if you need cash so bonds are transferable you can send it to any other person basically who has the bond on maturity date that person is going to get the cash on that final date meanwhile in between trading is possible okay similarly there are many other type of debt instruments like certificate of deposits okay like bill of exchange if you do not know them unfortunately we won't be able to go in detail here because otherwise this session will become very very long i'm only going to keep it within the broader broader parameter and if you want to cover these topics you have to stick with this channel subscribe this channel and wait for individual videos on these specific topics i promise to cover everything in the next 3 months okay it won't be possible before pt because pt is just approaching now so i will be covering them after the pt before pt i will only be covering the mcqs okay i'll stop them on probably wednesday or thursday 2 3 days before the examination and then from monday onwards next monday or basically after the pt i will start a series on ncrts and then i will start a concept series on all of these extra topics so that is my plan for future if you want to get those videos you can subscribe to this channel or if you want your friends to got those videos you can subscribe or send them the recommendation now getting back to the topic we have understood what is bond or basically debt where somebody gives other person money and the person who is taking money promises to give it back with some more money whereas what is equity in the equity market what happens let us say there is a and b a takes cash from b and in exchange what do b get b gets ownership in the company of a okay b becomes partner being partner doesn't mean that the a is going to discuss everything with you take the decision only after your approval because generally in equity distribution and at a stock market level companies sell very very small portion of ownership for example you buy 2000 shares of reliance that doesn't mean you are one of the partners in reliance mukesh ambani will take your suggestion before every business dealing that is not going to happen because the value of your 2000 shares is so low that is not equal to actually 0.001% of the shares of the company so you are owner of the company that is correct but how much you are owner of you are owner of 1 lakh of the company 1 lakh unit of the company Okay, if you own one percent share, you own one percent of the company. Okay, or one hundredth of the company. Company का सोवा हिस्सा आपका है. One percent is actually a very big share holding. And here we are talking about even a point zero zero one percent share holding in Reliance would be very big. It's not a small amount. Think about it. It is the one lakh value. Okay. let us say mukesh ambani's company has a value of let us say 5 lakh or 15 lakh crore this much is the value of mukesh ambani's company let us say and you are owner of 1 lakh value that means you are owner of worth 15 crore rupees worth of shares 15 crore ke share aapke paas honge reliance ke tab bhi aap sirf itne ke hi owner ho you are nowhere in this big company okay so you really need to own a very large amount of shares you should yourself should be a billionaire or a multi multi millionaire then only you have a significant say in the company basically everybody is owner but of a very small percentage of company so that is how equity market work company sell the ownership units ownership stakes in exchange of cash here what company sell company sell a future promise to pay with interest here company sell the ownership so that is the difference between equity and the debt market nowadays equity markets are becoming more prominent more important and more popular with people because of the startup revolution because of all these 
venture capital, angel investors, etc. Okay, there are some questions on these topics, so I will cover those with the questions that are in between. Now there are advantages and disadvantages of each. In the debt market, you if you are investor, then you are guaranteed a return. In the equity market, there is no guaranteed return. It is very much possible that the your value value of your share will fall. You do not earn anything, rather you lose money, which is not so likely in debt market. So debt markets are considered much safer compared to the equity market. But equity market also give you opportunity to earn big. Okay, so these are major differences from public's point of view. From a company's point of view, if the company takes money through debt, then it has to pay a fixed amount or even if it, the amount is not fixed, still it has to necessarily pay. Even if the company is in loss, company still has to pay the debt. But if company has made other people partners, then company doesn't have to pay back this money. Simply now other person also own this company. If there are losses, then other person also has losses. Investor also has loss, just like the company. You do not have to give money to anyone. You can give money to them as dividend if company is making profit. You can give them share in the profits, but only if company is making profit. So here you have to pay irrespective of your performance. Here you pay as per your performance. These are the major differences. Now, let us look at the next. Okay, debt versus equity is done on bonds. There is a special session that you can check out. Next is primary and secondary market. What do we have to cover here? Primary market is basically the first issue market. Okay, it creates the financial instruments. And what is the other role? Primary market actually and uh, creates investments. Now let me simplify. When the company issues share for the first time through IPO, initial public offer, then that is a primary market transaction. Similarly, if company issues more shares later on through rights issue or FPO forward, uh, further public offer then the transaction is still primary market so you buy shares in IPO you are directly buying it from company the money you give will be used by company for business investments later after two months you sell this share to someone else now company is out of it after IPO company is not related to these transactions anymore when you sell this share you sell it to some other person now money will not go to government oh sorry to that company and that money is not going to create investment so secondary market doesn't create investment secondary market leads to transfer of funds between people secondary market role is liquidity it improves the convertibility or acceptability of these instruments if you are not able to follow the terms i'm using like liquidity ipo fpo then you have to follow this channel I will cover all of this after PT okay so these are the three features of the primary market first issue market which create financial instruments and it creates investment okay and what is the role of secondary market secondary market helps in trade helps in trade and exchange of financial instruments okay the shares that are created through primary market are traded in secondary market stock exchange is basically secondary market stock exchange commodity exchange they are examples of secondary market okay so in fact 99% of transactions are secondary market primary market is just 1% <coughs> just give me one second break please
so this helps in trade and exchange and it contributes to liquidity liquidity in the system so this is the role of secondary market <coughs> IPO FPO rights issue these are example of primary market rest are secondary market okay and before a company can issue shares before a company can issue corporate bonds commercial papers any of these things it needs to take permission from SEBI okay and if a company is not taking permission from SEBI and still selling shares then that is also possible but then company can sell shares to limited number of people it can make only very limited number of partners okay so all these VCs VC investment in startups that is through private placement the process is known as private placement okay where you are not issuing IPO you are directly selling share to someone you are dealing with them and you transfer share to them through an agreement privately you settle it SEBI has nothing to do with that so this is primary and secondary market now we will look into money market and capital market this is the easiest of the classification money market deals with financial instruments up to one year maturity deals with financial instruments up to one year maturity and capital market more than one year maturity okay this is the most important and the common functions then example in capital market we have the typical government bonds we have the corporate bonds debentures typical debentures okay and we also have the shares or equities equity do not have any maturity date basically equity have infinite maturity what is maturity date that whatever agreement that you are having that agreement has a final date on which you will re-exchange the product or whatever was the term so you have given money at the end of the agreement at the maturity date you get back your money with interest okay so whatever is the agreement the agreement is completed concluded on a final date so if your agreement has more than one year duration then all such agreements are in capital market type shares do not have any maturity date as long as companies company is there you can be its owner so they have almost infinite maturity okay and up to one year maturity if the loan that you have given to someone or taken from someone the agreement is within one year the agreement completes within one year then those type of financial instrument belong to money market for example treasury bill for example the commercial paper okay for example certificate of deposit okay now there are questions on these also and through questions also we'll discuss these further all of these topics now let us move to the questions question number one under which of the following circumstances may capital gains arise this is a past year question so what is a capital gain capital gain is when you have an asset and the value of that asset increase so that is capital gain now when there is increase in the sale of a product so capital gain may arise there generally when there is increase in the sale of a product the price of that product is likely to increase let us say the asset that belongs to you is property you own a property and there is increase in the sale of property 
which means if there is more sale of property more people are buying properties in an area the price of property will increase and then basically the price if it is increasing basically capital gain will be there if you are property owner in that area value of your property rise the value of your capital that you own asset that you own increase that is capital gain so one is correct okay this is very much debatable some people may not interpret this to be correct because they say it is given a sale of a product not sale of an asset asset itself can be a product okay gold is both an asset or a product we consume gold okay even in medicines okay many of the ayurvedic medicines even you must have been able to recall there used to be sona chandi chavan prash so we consume gold in medicines in india we wear gold gold is a product as well as an asset so it is not a necessary thing that a product and asset are differentiated many a times even upsc key are i mean the upsc question also have this doubt how do you interpret it all so that doubt always remain there because only the person who has created the question has a certain idea and on the basis of that that idea the question is created unless question is absolutely specifically saying something you can never be sure of that but according to my interpretation it should be correct second when there is a natural increase in the value of property owned that is obviously correct that is the very definition of the capital gain third when you purchase a painting and there is growth in its value due to increase in popularity very good and well defined example so 2 and 3 are also correct answer should be d 1 2 and 3 okay second what does venture capital mean this is also a past year question nowadays everybody know what is venture, what is venture capital but in 2014 it was not a very popular term in india so in 2014 venture capital is short term capital provided to industry not necessarily short term is not a condition with venture capital and generally it is not short term generally it is long term a long term startup capital provided to new entrepreneurs that is correct not necessarily correct but that is correct okay let us look at other statement also yes it is long term but it is not always startup even if we accept startup it is not always provided to new entrepreneur it can be given to old entrepreneur mukesh ambani start a new company a startup he is can very well raise money through venture capital on that okay so this is these are not conditions but still if you look at other options other are so wrong that this is still correct funds provided to industry at times of loss incorrect funds provided to replacement and renovation of industry that is actually depreciation this is also not correct so b is the answer for sure third which of the following is issued by the registered foreign portfolio investor to overseas investor who wants to be part of indian stock market without registering themselves directly so answer for that is participatory note promissory note is basically a term we use for debt instruments or some of the other instruments commercial paper certificate of deposit both are a type of promissory note other options are not even related to stock market actually so since there is only one term which related to stock market even you can directly answer it without knowledge of this specifically so if there is a foreigner who want to buy indian shares but doesn't want to register directly with indian authorities or indian sebi for example here then they can buy it through the fii foreign institutional investor and the foreign portfolio or institutional investor they will invest their money in exchange of participatory note okay so they will inform about that to indian stock market and regulator what is the importance of the term so answer is d what is the importance of the term interest coverage ratio of a firm in india so this is also a pyq it helps in understanding the present risk of a firm that bank is giving the bank is going to give loan to okay can be correct let us look at the second statement it helps in evaluating the emerging risk of a firm that a bank is going to give loan to okay sounds better than a already okay better than one statement second the higher a borrowing firms 
level of interest coverage ratio worse is its ability to service its debt that is wrong now what is interest coverage ratio from where this company is going to pay interest profits to interest payment ratio okay so net profit to interest prof interest payment the interest that this company has to pay so if that ratio is higher if profits are higher much higher than interest that a company has to pay then it will be easily be able to pay if a company has less profit then paying interest would be difficult so three is definitely wrong the interest coverage ratio should be higher then it is better not worse second it helps in evaluating the emerging risk that is the major point that you have to capture here it is about the emerging risk not about the present risk okay interest coverage ratio is not about present risk in the future how much this company will continue to pay so it would be two only b okay one is wrong because it is not about present risk fifth with reference to indian economy consider the following statement again a pyq commercial paper is a short term unsecured promissory note is that correct yes in fact this is a question which is repeat i have already covered okay in the bonds also that was very relevant in the bonds also certificate of deposit is a long term instrument issued by rbi this is absolutely wrong there is no sense of this rbi doesn't issue any financial instrument directly call money is a short term finance used for interbank transaction that is correct zero coupon bonds are interest bearing short term bond issued by the scheduled commercial banks that is wrong scheduled commercial banks do not issue zero coupon bond zero coupon bonds are typically issued by government zero coupon bonds are bonds that do not pay interest for more detail on this question and this topic you have to watch my session on the bonds for this particular question answer is 1 and 3 commercial paper are short term up to 1 year maturity if they are more than 1 year they have to be uh, the corporate bonds okay so they are very much like corporate bond but they are short term but there is one more difference for commercial paper the company does not have to secure assets doesn't have to show assets and freeze them whereas for issuing corporate bonds companies have to freeze and show some assets to seb to get approval certificate of deposit okay so first was correct rbi doesn't issue anything so second is incorrect i do not have to explain this further call money is basically the loan or the arrangement between the banks generally bank take loan from each other for example a bank has to settle payment with other bank because when you give a check to someone your bank has to make payment to that person's bank so bank have lot of payments to settle with each other for some reason if a bank is unable to settle that payment then what they do they say okay i will settle it tomorrow what you do you settle the payment today but you give me a loan with that loan you settle the payment that loan i will pay you tomorrow the, these loans are always 24 hours or one day so one and three is the answer zero coupon statement was wrong only government issue the zero coupon bonds okay or some ngos can issue zero coupon zero principal bonds okay some corporates may also issue but generally it is the government okay six indian government bond yields are influenced by which of the following now bond yield is a very technical topic and which is already covered in the session on the bonds kindly watch that session for this particular question okay this question is also specifically covered here their answer is d 1 2 and 3 bond yield basically how much government of india has to pay when it is issuing a bond so if american bonds are going to pay less or more indian banks also have to adjust indian government also have to adjust i mean action of rbi rbi can directly influence the bond uh, interest or the yields by supplying more or demanding more similarly inflation interest rate obviously affect the bond so that is also correct all three are correct question 7 with reference to convertible bonds consider the following statement 
as there is an option to exchange the bond for equity convertible bond pay a lower rate of interest what are convertible bonds these are the bonds that can be converted into shares in the future date so for example there is a bond let us say bond is worth 5 crore rupees today after 5 years the bond is going to give you 8 crore rupees but there is also an option today company is also giving you 2000 shares they are not transferred in your name okay you are only entitled to them at maturity so you get basically you pay 5 crore today you get a certificate of 2000 shares as well as 8 crore rupee that you can get either of them after 5 years let us say the value of the share of the company has increased a lot okay let us say this share was 4 lakh rupees earlier or not 4 lakh sorry 2.5 lakh rupees earlier each share was worth 2.5 lakh rupees let us say now let us say it becomes 6 lakh rupees after 5 years the share of the company increase in value significantly now you do not have to accept 8 crore then after 5 years you will take 2000 shares and since each is worth 6 lakh you will now get almost 12 crore rupees here okay so that is the advantage you have so this gives you an extra option you can convert it so since there is an extra option they pay you lower interest that is obvious the option to convert to equity afford the bond holder a degree of indexation to rising consumer price this is correct okay so since equity prices are more sensitive to inflation that gives you some relationship to the inflation as well so some coverage against that risk so both one and two so some of these questions are already covered in the session on the bonds but since bond is a topic which is very well part of the financial market i have repeated three of the questions here the coming questions are unique not repetition so you can continue this session not all questions are repeated regarding balloon payment the term balloon refers to which of the following the final payment is significantly large that is the meaning of balloon payment okay towards the end you have to pay more so let us say typical shape of a balloon is this when you start okay uh, not in fact many of the balloons have this shape okay bit of rounded here so initially pressure is less to pay but as loan as time spends as you keep on paying emi the emi burden increases so that is the balloon payments this is generally used in the case of corporate loans not for the individual households are not given option of a balloon payment <coughs> ninth which of the following statement is correct regarding chit funds so chit funds are a part of unorganized money market the registration and regulation of chit fund are carried out by state government that is correct okay these are not under rbi <coughs> chit fund fall under the definition of nbfc issued by the rbi the definition is issued by rbi chit funds are not issued by rbi okay be very clear do not mix up okay maybe we can use a comma okay so chit fund fall under definition of nbfcs issued by the rbi so this is also correct chit fund officially come under non bank finance corporations in chit fund member make periodical subscription to the fund that is also correct people make periodical payment and in exchange they get uh, let us say ownership of more and more of the fund so all of these are correct 1 2 and 
नेक्स्ट विद रेस्पेक्ट टू एलिफेंट बॉन्ड कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इट इज ए फाइव ईयर सॉवरेन बॉन्ड दैट इज इनकरेक्ट ओके इट इज ए फिफ्टीन ईयर बॉन्ड द फंड विल बी यूटिलाइज फॉर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट सॉरी ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर माई बैड आई एक्सीडेंटली सेड फिफ्टीन ईयर सो इट इज ए ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर बॉन्ड और मे बी आई विल राइट हेयर सो दिस बॉन्ड हैज मेचोरिटी पीरियड ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर वेरी वेरी लॉन्ग मेचोरिटी पीरियड ओनली फॉर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट एंड इट वॉज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सुरजीत पल्ला कमेटी सो टू एंड थ्री आर करेक्ट हेयर ओके अगेन माई पार्टन आई एक्सीडेंटली सेट फिफ्टीन ईयर हेयर सो दिस इज अबाउट द एलिफेंट बॉन्ड विद रेफरेंस टू द फॉरन करेंसी कन्वर्टेबल बॉन्ड कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कन्वर्टेबल बॉन्ड्स बट दीज बॉन्ड्स वर इक्विटी कन्वर्टेबल हेयर दीज आर फॉरन करेंसी कन्वर्टेबल बॉन्ड्स सो इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ कन्वर्सिबल कन्वर्टेबल बॉन्ड दैट कैन ओनली बी इशूड विद ए कॉल ऑप्शन ओके आई विल एक्सप्लेन लेट इज लुक एट दिस स्टेटमेंट फॉर द they allow the issuer or bond holder the option to convert the bonds in shares midway during the term the conversion of bonds to share can only take place at an pre agreed price okay so the first statement is incorrect there is no necessary condition for a call option what is a call option there is a very technical term called call and put okay call when you say that this asset will become of this much value that means if you are buying some derivatives these are used in very technical aspects actually so in derivatives we use call and put call when you are saying something will achieve a certain value okay and you are giving guarantee for it basically so that is a call option so there is no necessity for convertible bond example let us say i issue a convertible bond with a call option that i'll just <coughs> that dollar if it becomes up to 85 rupees i will be honoring this bond okay so likewise or the this much value of dollar i will pay maximum on that this is my call for the dollar to rise to the maximum if dollar rise above 85 you are at advantage the person who has called and if dollar remain below 85 then you are at loss because you have to pay 85 you have called for 85 okay so this is not a necessary thing you do not have to go much deeper into it i think this example gives you a fair idea so for example today the dollar price is 82 but you sell a convertible bond where you are ready to pay 85 for each dollar not 82 so if dollar value become more than 85 then you are at advantage if you have issued it okay issuer of the bond gives a call and buyer gives a put okay so likewise second they allow the issuer or bond holder the option to convert the bond into shares midway during its term that is correct the conversion of bond can take place at a, only at a pre agreed price that is correct okay price has to be pre agreed in case you are converting these into shares the share price must be pre agreed that each share is worth 1500 rupees okay under this agreement so if you want to convert this bond into share you can convert but only when share is 1500 i mean for example if you have a bond worth 15 lakh rupees okay and let us say the share value that is prescribed is 150 rupees okay that means this bond can be converted for 10000 shares 
if share value is more the person who has taken the conversion option will be at advantage so this is a, one of the most technical question in this discussion and i will not be spending too much of time here okay so this is the basic idea behind conversion conversion uh, sorry conversion from bond to share the call etc i just wanted to introduce these very briefly so in this case answer is b 2 and 3 12th with consider uh, con sorry with should not be here consider the following statement with reference to exchange traded funds okay it is a basket of securities that trade on exchange just like stocks that is correct okay like mutual fund that traded once a day after the market closed this is wrong exchange traded fund can be traded like stocks that means they can be traded throughout the day if one is correct second can't be correct again one is definitely correct they are just tradable like shares on the stock exchange ETF has an upper limit of 20 units in the basket you know this is wrong because one of the most popular example of ETF is Bharat 22 Bharat 22 tracks the share of 22 public sector units so obviously there is no upper limit here so in this case only one is correct a is the answer question number 13 which of the following best describe purpose of a credit default swap so what is a credit default swap basically there are two parties okay for example you have given a loan to someone person a give a loan to b person a is basically an institution so company a give loan to person b of 1 crore rupees fine but this company a also get into an agreement with company c company c let us say gives an assurance that i will cover this risk of 1 crore let us say b doesn't pay there are always risk in the market you have given loan to someone the other person may not pay so that risk is always there let us say the other person doesn't pay then the c will pay you okay so credit default the credit that you have given if it is defaulted by the other party other party doesn't pay then instead of b c will pay you this is the swap c will pay you okay so basically it's like an insurance that you have purchased from c so basically an insurance where you are guaranteed for your payment either b will pay or if b doesn't pay then c will have to pay for so so of course c will charge you for that service if c is going to give you such an excellent service ki aapka koi risk hi nahi hai to c bhi to uske liye charge karega na so c charge for that service so that is a credit default swap look at the option mitigation of risk associated with a fix or floating interest rate regime no it is not about fix or floating whether your interest rate increase that loss is covered it is not that mitigation of risk associated with volatility in currency market so this is not related to credit default swap volatility in currency market risk is covered and for that there are hedge funds okay we hedge in various other currencies so that is a different thing c securing a price hedge against variation in commodity prices so again price hedge in commodity prices is also related to commodity market credit default means against a loan so insurance against possible non repayment of principal or interest this is correct so for 13 d is the answer and i hope this is clear to you 14th consider the following statement regarding commercial paper we have already discussed it so let us look at the option it is an unsecured money market instrument issued in the form of a promissory note this is correct it is unsecured and all the debt instruments are promissory note i have already told you okay so this is correct it is issued by corporates primary dealers and the all india financial institutions that is also correct what is all india financial institution so there are certain companies which are 
supported by government of india okay managed by government of india or through some there is some mechanism through government of india where with the help of these institution government support the credit creation in the economy so examples are sidbi small industrial development bank of india exim bank export import bank of india these are some example of all india financial institution so there are about five of them try to identify these third all eligible participants shall obtain the credit rating for issuance of commercial papers that is correct commercial paper or corporate cor uh, sorry commercial paper or corporate bond can only be issued after cbs approval only after you have received the credit rating all three are correct d is the answer 15th with reference to certificate of deposit which of the following statement given below is incorrect they are issued by banks generally for a period less than one year okay before we answer this let us look at the other options and we have to identify incorrect one a is correct okay but still without looking at other option we can't say for sure a is mostly correct okay generally for a period less than one year there can be more than one year maturity so they are not tradable in money market that is actually wrong so we got our answer here itself so certificate of deposit are of two types one which is tradable one which is not tradable you can't say in general that they are not tradable in money market so that is wrong c financial institution can issue for maturity period above one year or up to three years so that is correct they can be issued but generally less than one year minimum amount should be one lakh that is also correct so we know our answer that is b here Sixteenth, in context of mutual fund, consider the following. They are regulated by both RBI and SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India. Is that correct? Are mutual funds regulated by both the agencies? Tricky question. Okay. Okay, that is correct. Okay, both have taken that. In close-ended schemes, the units are not allowed to be traded on stock exchange. That is incorrect. Okay, close-ended schemes are which one? Close-ended schemes are those where only one time a mutual fund is created, units are sold, and only one time people can buy. after that people can trade into themselves company will be out of the market company will just maintain the fund okay you cannot buy a fund from company in future company will just deal once in primary market and then there is secondary market for it so these are tradable close ended are tradable open ended let us look at them also open ended scheme the nav is fixed permanently to safeguard the investment that is wrong in the open ended people are coming in regularly okay new people are buying the funds directly from company so there is no fixed permanent value okay so this is also wrong in this case answer is one only question number 17 with reference to commodity exchanges in india consider the following so the two most important commodity exchange in india are mcx which is multi commodity exchange and ncdex national commodity and derivative exchange so now let us look at it they are regulated by the forward market commission under the ministry of finance that is wrong now because there used to be a forward market commission but it was merged with sebi around 2016 okay so that forward market commission was merged into sebi even before 2016 so that forward market commission no longer exists 
today sebi regulates the commodity exchange and the second is national commodity and derivative exchange limited ncdex primarily deal with agricultural commodities that is correct okay two only is correct answer is b mcx deals with gold futures bullion okay metals more than the agriculture ncdex is primarily the agriculture exchange 18th equity financing allows a company to acquire funds without incurring debt we discuss debt versus equity and that is correct in the equity financing a company is selling the ownership stake in the company ownership certificates so it can raise funds without taking a loan without a future commitment to pay that instruments provide a capital to an entity that promise to repay the capital over time is that correct that is correct okay you have to repay the capital you should ideally also pay interest also but still that doesn't make this statement incorrect okay because there can be some zero coupon that instruments So C, both one and two, they are correct. Nineteenth, with reference to the masala bond, which of the following statement is or are incorrect? It gives Indian borrower a choice of external commercial borrowings. That is correct. Masala bonds are bonds issued by Indian companies or Indian PSUs. indian government in international stock exchanges or international markets but the payment that we have to make the loan that we are taking is in rupee terms not in foreign currency terms so we have to identify incorrect ones here so a is one is correct so this is not one of the answer here foreign investor bear the currency risk that is correct we do not bear the currency risk by the way masala bond is also covered in the topic of bonds in much more detail if you want to see much more detail on masala bond see the session on bond which is just previous to uh, which is session number 10 previous to previous one foreign investor if you are taking loan in rupee terms and you have to pay in rupee terms only if the exchange rate falls or if exchange rate increases then you are not affected the other person who has given you loan will be affected International Finance Corporation issued a 50 year masala bond in London Stock Exchange. This is obviously incorrect. Okay. So there is a 15 year masala bond over here. So answer should be 1 and 2 C. Uh, sorry. we have to identify incorrect so 3 is incorrect b is the answer be careful okay so because these things can natural tendency is always to pick up the correct one i picked up that this is incorrect still my first basic instinct was to say c is correct okay you have to overcome your instincts always underline this whenever there is incorrect circle it in your question paper before answering always look if there is a circle if there is a circle you have to think about it twice before answering दो तीन क्वेश्चन तो हम ऐसे ही गलत कर देते हैं वी गेट टू टू थ्री रॉन्ग जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस बी केयरफुल अबाउट दैट नेक्स्ट आई पी ओ इज द सेलिंग ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज टू द पब्लिक फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट सेकेंडरी मार्केट इज रॉन्ग हेयर इट इज इन द प्राइमरी मार्केट आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इट इन डिस्कस्ड इट इन दिस सेशन राइट्स इश्यू विच वॉज इन न्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ द अडानी इशू ओके अडानी टेक ओवर ऑफ एन डी टी वी एंड मैनी अदर इशूज so this is very well a topic which is in news right now it is a mechanism by which company can raise additional capital from existing shareholder that is correct basically company issue an offer to the existing shareholder that we are ready to give you shares at a discounted price we want to give additional shares in the market okay so they get the first right to subscribe in the case of rights issue so b is the answer to only so with this we have completed this session i hope this has been helpful to you and as i always say please 
leave some comments like the video share the video in your whatsapp group telegram group because this is a very small channel channel and it needs your support for growth okay thank you